Hey, good morning, Green Valley Church. Can we stand to our feet? Hey, if you're in the room or you're joining us online, we are so glad you guys are here with us. Let's worship. Come on. This morning, Lord, we're just so thankful for what you've done for us, God. As we come out of this Easter season, Lord, we're just thankful for the cross, Lord, for the blood that set us free. God. We love you. And we thank you for this this morning. Amen.
Oh, what my heart experienced When my shame hit the wayside And my sin met the most high I was washed from the inside I was washed from the Come on, let's sing we just come to you this morning with a thankful heart. Thank you for your blood, Father. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made for all of us, Lord. We love you and we praise you and we thank you this morning. We all say, you can all be seated. Have a look at the side screens. Welcome to Green Valley Community Church. We're so glad that you're with us. If you're joining us online or you're visiting for the first time, we just wanna say welcome. Now's the time in our service where we do our giving. There are three ways that you can do that. We have our Green Valley app, we have our church website and boxes out in the lobby. And we just wanna say a huge thank you because through your generosity, we are able to do so many things here on our campus and in our community. Something coming up that we're really excited about are our kids camps happening in June. So if you would like to sign a kid up or volunteer to help out, you can do that on our app or you can come see us at the Connect Wall and we can get you plugged in. It's a great way for our kids to have fun over the summer, but also to learn about the love of Jesus. We also have a great volunteer opportunity coming up in April. April 20th from 8.30 to 11.30, you can volunteer down in our memory garden. This is a great place that we have on our lower campus that allows people that have lost a loved one to come and remember and spend some time just thinking about them, praying and spending some reflection time. So if you want to volunteer in our memory garden, you can show up on the 20th at 8.30, bring some gloves, you're going to have fun working alongside other people, just creating a beautiful space for people in our community. 
We're in our new series right now called Uncontainable, and Becca's going to be coming up and sharing the next message in this series. But before she does, why don't you guys stand up and say good morning to somebody next to you? to be in church today. <laughs> it's great to see you guys and also those of you tuning in online or down in the Family Center Cafe. We're excited just to be together this morning and um, thank our worship team for some incredible worship this morning as well. I'm excited to continue our new series called Uncontainable, where we are making our way through the book of Acts. And there's going to be, we're going to break it up into some different sections. But for the next three weeks, we're going to be looking at the empowered church. And specifically today, I'm going to be talking about the idea of power. But before I get to it, I want to start us off with a question and a story. Have you ever had a moment in life where you felt like you had no control? Like, okay, <laughs> it's real, right? I think all of us have had that, where you had absolutely no power over a situation that you found yourself in. Back when I was in college, I was sort of dating a guy, and he happened to be from Los Angeles, Las Vegas, sorry, but we both went to university kind of over in the Los Angeles area. And I was in Las Vegas visiting my family, and we both needed to get back to school. And so he said, hey, do you want to ride from Las Vegas to Los Angeles together? I said, sure. So we're making our way across the desert, and we come to the state line, and he points out the window, and he says, hey, we should go ride that roller coaster ride. It's really fun. And I was like, dude, I'm not a fan of roller coasters. I'm terrified of heights, and I hate that feeling you get in your stomach when you do the big drop. And he's like, don't worry about it. This is cool. It's tame. It'll be a lot of fun. And so I looked out the window to kind of verify what he was saying, and this is what I saw of the roller coaster. Okay, this is actually what the ride was. <laughs> Desperado, one of the tallest roller coasters in the world in 1994, listed in 1996 in the Guinness Book of World Records as the tallest roller coaster. It's actually not just a roller coaster, it's a hyper coaster has a 225-foot drop, and is the seventh longest coaster in the world. It goes 80 miles an hour, and riders on it experience four Gs. You guys, I agreed to go on the ride based off of my limited view of it from the highway. And that is what I experienced, four Gs. I promise you, I literally remember I did not take a breath the entire ride. It's, yes, four Gs. I felt totally out of control and my contacts flew off of my eyeballs because I <laughs> didn't close them the whole ride because I just was so incredulous that this dude would pull one over on me. Don't you think life's that way, though, sometimes? Life has a way of surprising us and literally taking our breath away. We think life is going to be one way, and it winds up being way more difficult than we ever expected it to be. Any breathless parents in the room? Maybe you have a prodigal child that you raised in the way of Jesus and they have walked away and it leaves you breathless. Maybe you're going through the foster adoption process and you're giving it everything you've got and it leaves you 
breathless. Maybe your child has such significant needs that you feel like you can't possibly meet them all and you have your breath taken away on a daily basis. Maybe you're here in this room and you're someone who's reeling from the loss of a loved one, the loss of a spouse, the loss of a child or a breakup or a medical diagnosis or news you weren't expecting that came to you this week. Maybe you're reeling from facing unemployment and financial hardship or relational tension. These are the things in life that take our breath away and steal our sense of control and leave us feeling powerless. Would you agree? Maybe you recently decided to follow Jesus and you're all in, but guess what? It's harder than you thought it was gonna be. Or maybe the longer you live and the more you look at the world, the more aware you become of its brokenness and you start to feel hopeless and you feel so powerless in the face of what's going on. Is anybody finding themselves in the things that I just described? You're in good company because we're all there. And I have hope to share with you today, and it's from the book of Acts. And here's the cool thing about the book of Acts. It's like a roller coaster ride, too. It's about, it's a book of action. It's about people and the beginning of the church and the Holy Spirit. And this, it traces the growth of the early church numerically. They just like went gangbusters all of a sudden. Geographically, it's spread. Socially, they're developing their understanding of who God is and who they're supposed to be. It's a roller coaster ride. And from our human point of view, we might think, well, the disciples, they had, they had all that time with Jesus on the earth. And so they're well prepared for the roller coaster ride that's going to come through the book of Acts. They're well prepared for the job that they have as the church to go into all the world and be witnesses to who Jesus is. After all, they got to know the risen Savior in real time. They got to walk with Jesus. They they knew him in a really personal way. Jesus himself taught them the scriptures. Jesus himself painstakingly explained to them over and over and over again what was to come. They heard it firsthand. They should be well prepared for what is coming. But just like me on that roller coaster, their limited perspective actually led them to not really understanding what was coming. The wild ride ahead that they would be powerless on their own. And here's what Jesus knows about the disciples, and here's what Jesus knows about every one of us in this room and online today, is that we need the person and the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be able to make it through life. We need the person and the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be able to live into the mission that we were created for, which was to be image bearers of our creator to bear witness to who God is, to reflect and represent him to the world around us. That is what we are created for. That is what we are called to. And so we're gonna unpack some things today about power. We're gonna start in the book of Acts chapter one, verse four, where Jesus is giving some instructions to his disciples because he knew the wild ride that was coming and he knew the best way for them to be prepared to face it. And this is what he says. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And then further in verse eight, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be witnesses. That means to tell everyone the good news about me and my kingdom, to live into what you are created for and what you are called to. Jesus tells them, he instructs them, stay and wait and receive power. 
And so our big idea for today is this, that the witness of the church is dependent on the spirit. We cannot possibly be who we are created to be and called to do without the power of the Holy Spirit. Without first being empowered by God's spirit, the church cannot advance. The church cannot withstand persecution and the church cannot be innovative. We cannot do it on our own. And what a relief that we don't have to. In Acts chapter two, it describes what happens after they chose to wait and to obey what God says. And it says this, on the day of Pentecost, all of the believers were meeting together in one place. And then suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave this, them this ability. See, the Holy Spirit makes it possible for us to live into our purpose of witnessing to the truth of who Jesus is in three ways. By giving us the power to hear by giving us the power to see, and by giving us the power to do. See, when the Holy Spirit filled the room, the first thing that happened was that the the disciples heard the evidence of the presence of God. There was a mighty, mighty sound that came. And so the Holy Spirit gives us the power to hear. There's a subtle difference, would you agree, between listening and hearing? Listening is to focus on um, the words being communicated and it stops there, right? She said, one, two, three, four, five. That's it. Hearing means to read between the lines. What is going on behind the words? Well, I was counting, right? I have a bad habit that I'm wondering if anybody will be willing to admit that they also have. I like to hang out with my husband. We like to watch a movie together or a TV show. And what I will say to him is, hmm, I might be a little hungry. What I mean is, if he's really, really hearing me, is will you please get up and get me a snack from the kitchen that's all the way across the house? I love you, thank you. (laughs) Anybody else do that? Anybody? Yeah, okay, good. All right, I'm not alone in my craziness. I want us to just imagine for a moment, you're in that upper room and all of a sudden this sound comes sweeping through the room of like a mighty thunderstorm. If you're only just listening, what does it sound like to you? Noise, a change in weather patterns. But if you really hear what's going on, you can recognize that this is actually the manifest presence of God in the room. God has come. What we really hear matters. And the power of the Holy Spirit makes it so that we can hear. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to hear God in different ways. And the first way that God empowers us to hear him is through the Bible. Have you ever sat down with the Bible and thought this? I have no idea what I'm reading. Me too. Okay. Or it seems like a bunch of noise, big words, and names that I have no idea how to pronounce. Okay, great. Or you just, you've read a passage and you're like, what does it all mean? Yeah, that's fair, right? I mean, that's real. Here's the deal, though. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10, it says that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit shows us God's deep secrets. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so that we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. You guys, It is the Spirit's job, the Spirit's job to reveal to us and give us the power to hear God's secrets. 
It is the Spirit's job to reveal to us all of the wonderful things that God has in store for us that he has chosen to communicate to us through the written word of God. It is God's job through the Spirit to communicate the story of redemption to us, to make the word come alive to us. It's not like you sit down with your Bible and you read a certain amount of pages and then you graduate to level 200 and you graduate to level 300. That's not how it works. The Spirit of God is responsible to help you hear what it is God's message is to you through his word. Just take a breath and let the Spirit do what the Spirit is supposed to do. On Easter, we had an incredible testimony shared with us from one of our precious church members, and I was so struck by her story in this way. She shared about a time that she was attending a Christian university, and if you missed it, you can go back and watch it online, by the way. She was attending a Christian university. She was okay with Jesus. She was doing a benchmark uh, project, and she was reading the Bible for three days solid. And then all of a sudden, she understood what she was reading. She shares it in such a powerful way. She says she finally understood as she sat there and read her Bible because the Holy Spirit came on her who Jesus is. She finally understood how much God loves her. She finally understood God is not just a consciousness that Jesus is God, that there is a triune God of God, Father, God, Son, God, Holy Spirit. And it was such a profound experience for her that she began to weep because her ears were open to hearing the life-giving word of God. And her soul came alive. That was the Holy Spirit giving her the power to hear God's truth. The Spirit also empowers us to be able to hear God through prayer. Prayer is essentially a direct connection to hearing the voice of God. God will give us direction and comfort and wisdom and perspective. And in the book of Acts, as we make our way through, you will see that prayer plays a vital role in the followers of Jesus being able to accomplish their mission because God is communicating to them as they turn to him in prayer, as they make big, important decisions, as they choose leadership, as they need instructions on what next step to take in dealing with some really difficult things. The Holy Spirit of God speaks to them through prayer by warning them of things that are coming to keep them safe. In Ephesians 6, 18, we are charged to do this. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. I love this reminder. Pray in the spirit at all times. Because I don't know about you, but the roller coaster of my life leads me to having moments when things feel completely out of my control and I become paralyzed with fear. But when I pray in the spirit, God comforts me. I have times when I don't know what to pray. I literally do not have the words. But when I pray in the spirit, God speaks to me and God speaks for me. He gives me the words. God hears me as I pray and I hear God speaking to me as I pray. There are times in life when I don't know the next right thing to do. I can't see my way through a situation, but when I pray in the spirit, God gives me instruction and direction. And sometimes it's just literally for the next inch that I'm supposed to move. Or what about when we're afraid to speak the truth? We're worried about what people will think about us. Pray in the spirit because God will give you courage. 
Jesus said, whoever has ears, let them hear. I promise you, God is always speaking. God is always speaking through his word. God is always speaking to us in prayer. And it is the spirit's job in our life to help us to hear what God is saying. The second amazing thing that the spirit does that it gives us power to see. When you, when you look at your life and you look at the world around you, what do you, what do you see? We have a tendency as human beings to see things the way that we think they are, not actually as they really are. There's a thing called a Rorschach test. Do you know what that is, anybody? Okay, it's, kind of, it's like a test they use in psychology where you look at these ink blots on a piece of paper and then they ask you, what do you perceive to be in this you know, blot of ink on a paper, right? And it's, it's been controversial, but for many years, they thought that it was a helpful interpretive tool to indicate these things, to help identify people's personalities, to help uh, understand their, their characteristics, their perspectives, their emotional functioning. So think about how this applies to how we see the world. When we look at the world with our limited perspectives, through our, through our emotional states, it determines what we are able to see. Would you agree? It shapes our perception of reality. Just like as I was driving down the highway and I looked out the window to the roller coaster that my friend wanted me to ride, right? My perspective was limited. And when I only saw part of the roller coaster, the lie that he had told me was confirmed by what I was able to see from my limited perspective. But the reality that I've shared with you is that there was way more going on with that ride than I could see. There was a point when the answer key of the Rorschach test was leaked. And this is, this is what happened. Many psychologists were outraged, believing that having the information out there would make the test worthless since test takers could memorize the answers and cheat. It told them what to see in that spot right? Well, in life, you guys, the Spirit of God is the answer key for us, has all the answers for what really is in what we are looking at. The Spirit of God gives us the power to see things as they really are, that we cannot possibly see with our limited perspective. And here's what's really going on in the world and in life. There is a spiritual battle being waged for the souls of all humankind. In 1 Peter 5.8, it says this, that there is a great enemy, the devil, who prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That is what is really going on. There is an enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And there are people who are lost and broken and in need of a savior. That's what's really going on. And the thing is, is that without the Holy Spirit, we might, in our limited perspective, just not be aware of the pain and the brokenness in people that we encounter every day. Or we might notice it and have no clue where it's coming from or what the antidote is or what our role is. In verse three, what happened is after the sound, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on the believers that, in that were in that room and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, why fire? Anybody else wondering that question? Why fire? What does it mean? Well, in the Bible, fire symbolized God's presence. It symbolized purification. It, it symbolized refining and transformation. And so for the disciples in this moment in the upper room, God is purifying them. 
He is transforming them. He is refining them. He is marking them with his presence so that they can better reflect Jesus to the world. But also he's removing these faulty filters that they have on their eyes so that they can have the spiritual eyes to see what is really going on in the world around them. And it is only by really seeing what's going on in the world around them that they're really gonna know how to deliver the message that people so desperately need to their point of brokenness. The Holy Spirit changes the way we see things because the Holy Spirit gives us a new perspective. It takes away those faulty, sinful filters that we have and it takes our eyes and it gives us the eyes of Christ and the mind of Christ when we look at the world around us. When I was in high school, I played softball and I, it was so much fun. And I went to the eye doctor and, because I was in math class. So my, my math teacher and my softball coach were the same person. And my math teacher slash coach realized that I was sitting in the back of the room and I couldn't really see what was going on in the board. So she said, do you, do you think you should go get your eyes checked out? So I went and I got them checked out. Turns out I needed glasses. Okay, and because she had been part of this process with me, she knew I had glasses now. But I kept going to practice and to games, refusing to wear my glasses. They just got in the way. They were annoying. Like, how are you supposed to play softball with glasses on your face, right, with your cap? Okay, well, I was so stubborn, and she was even more stubborn, that she benched me and said, you're not allowed to play until you put your glasses on. (laughs) Guess who won? The coach, the coach because she knew I could not see the ball coming at me without the glasses on, right? And wow, I started to like see that there were leaves in the trees and I could tell that I was 50 yards out and it was a whole new world to me, right? We cannot be the valuable members of Team Jesus and Team Share the Gospel with people if we don't put our glasses on, you guys. The Holy Spirit wants to help us see things clearly. The Holy Spirit helps us see when there's softballs coming at our face. The Holy Spirit helps us see the beauty that there is in the world, as well as the struggle and the pain beneath the surface for people. We might come across an unruly child and without our spirit glasses on, see them one way, but man, we put those spirit glasses on and we see it a whole other way. We might come across a person who is dirty and seems to be obviously homeless and without our spirit glasses on, we might see them a certain way, but man, we put our spirit glasses on and we see them a whole different way. The power of the Holy Spirit in our life is that God gives us the ability to see things the way that he does, to see what's really going on beneath the surface. And so I wanna ask you, really think about this. What do you need, what do you see when you look at the world around you? And do you need a new perspective? Do you need the fire of God to come and to purify your perspective, to wipe away your faulty filters, to open your eyes to see things the way that Jesus sees them. I came across this really beautiful prayer that I'm gonna just share with you really quickly. And it says this, help me to see people with eyes of grace. Father, help me to see the beauty, the dignity and your image in people much more clearly than I notice their brokenness and inconsistencies. And when I do see their weaknesses, may I do so with compassion and understanding, not with shock and irritation. Help me to see what you see in my spouse, in my children, in my friends, in total strangers. The power of the Spirit moves us from judgment to compassionate action. And that's our third thing today. The power of the Holy Spirit comes on us so that we can do what it is that God has called us to do. Remember where we started today? 
Jesus told the disciples to stay and wait and receive the Holy Spirit. And without our spiritual glasses on, we might look at it and go, well, they're doing nothing. (laughs) They're staying and waiting and receiving. What are they doing, right? Actually, they're doing exactly what was needed. They were obeying God. Second Timothy says to work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. And I will tell you from personal experience that there will be times in your life when the work at telling others the good news about Jesus looks like waiting. Because what you are modeling in that moment of waiting is obedience. And it will look like staying because you are modeling trust in God's timing and in his plan. And there will be times in your life when working at telling others about Jesus looks like sitting and receiving power from God because what you are witnessing to is a reliance on God's power and God's strength and not your own. The Bible says that his power is made perfect in our weakness. And as somebody who likes to do, who wants to be strong, and maybe the world tells us we have to be strong all the time, can I tell you? One of the most powerful testimonies in your life will be when you are the weakest. Because God's power is made perfect in your weakness. Don't resent those times. Welcome them because as you do, you welcome the power and the presence of God in your life. On the day of Pentecost, they began speaking in a new language, and it was a sign of something so incredible. It was a sign that God's power was going to rest on all people who called on the name of Jesus, irrespective of gender, irrespective of culture and of family history and of of physical ability. The Spirit of God came and rested on every believer that was in that room. And they began to speak in different languages, symbolizing that the good news of Jesus is literally for everybody. Not just for the people that speak my language, but literally the whole world. What a beautiful movement to be part of, that God's good news of salvation is for every person, and we get to be part of that. We get to be part of communicating that to the world. We get to be part of bearing witness to who Jesus is. The Spirit has a very, very particular job, and it is to draw attention to Jesus. And you and I, when we are empowered by the Spirit, our job is to draw attention to Jesus. And how do we do that? Every time Jesus is lifted up, every time the gospel is proclaimed, every time we sing songs of praise and worship, every time somebody is prayed for in the name of Jesus, every time somebody cheerfully and sacrificially gives of what they have to the mission of God, every time a believer pauses to pray with someone or somebody who has a busy schedule takes time out of it to spend time with a child, every time we are convicted of sin and we repent, every time somebody is baptized declaring that Jesus is Lord of their life, every time we feed somebody who is hungry or we clothe the needy or justice comes for the oppressed, we are bearing witness to who Jesus is. That's what we do as the church of Jesus. And all of it happens when we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, when we can actually hear God 
when we can see what God is doing in the world, then we get to be part of what God is doing. By the Spirit, we have that power to hear. By the Spirit, we have the power to see. By the Spirit, we have the power to do. You guys, life's a roller coaster. It's going to whip you all kinds of sideways. But by the power of the Spirit, we get to be those people that are on the roller coaster with their arms up in the sky saying, bring it on. Bring it on. Because I am not powerless. I have the power of God's Spirit in my life. Will you stand as I pray for you? God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. God, I thank you that your your plan didn't mean Jesus ascending to heaven and then leaving us to our own devices and our own abilities and our own power. But God, you sent your Holy Spirit to make the word come alive to us, to give us eyes to see what's really going on and to give us the power and the strength that comes from you to be able to live into the call that we are created for, which is to bear your image to a broken and a desperate and a needy world. And so Holy Spirit, I pray that you will help us this week to be more aware of your presence in our lives, to be more willing to follow your promptings and and, and to be obedient to what it is that you ask us to be. God, I pray that our lives in the mundane and the spectacular and all of the in-between would bear witness to who Jesus is. In your name we pray, amen. Can we say thank you to Rebecca for uh, sharing with us today? Great job. Great job, Rebecca. Hey, a couple things before you go. Um, in this series, Unstoppable, if you remember last week, we talked about there's four segments of this, uh, this uh, series. And so we're going to be talking about the power of the Holy Spirit the next two weeks as well. Um, so I encourage you to come back to hear that. It's going to be awesome. Also, our pastoral partners will be up here with yellow lanyards. They'd love to pray with you about anything that's going on in your life. Otherwise, go enjoy your day. God bless you. We'll see you next week. All right?